Hi guys, welcome to this set of videos. What we're going to do here in this set of videos is now we're going to take a look at how we can use trig functions, uh, sine and cosine, to help us solve triangles that are not right triangles. Hopefully what you'll remember in the previous chapter, we looked at how we could use the sine, cosine, and the tangent function to help us solve for the unknown measures of right triangles. But the triangle had to be a right triangle, meaning it must have a 90 degree angle in it. Does that mean then that trig functions don't work for any triangle? Well, since we're doing a new chapter and because our essential question is how can I use trigonometric ratios, right, to find the measure of non-right triangles, Obviously the answer is no, right? We can use the trig functions to still help us solve triangles even though they don't have a 90 degree angle in them. So non-right triangles. And that's what we're gonna take a look at here starting in this set of notes with what is known as the law of sines. And then in the next section, the next set of notes, we'll take a look at what is known as the law of cosines. And both of these laws are going to allow us to solve for the unknown measures in non-right triangles, meaning a triangle that does not have a 90 degree angle. Now, the way this is gonna work is first, we're gonna introduce you to the law of sines. What is the law of sines? And then we'll go ahead and take a look at how we can use the law of sines to find unknown measures or links. And that's the way that this is gonna work. So here we go, let's jump right into it. What you guys will remember from the last chapter, uh, what we just looked at, right, is that the sine function, the ratio for the sine function is the opposite over the hypotenuse. And that ratio works if it is a right triangle. This is as long. There we go. Sorry, not as long. Must be right triangle. must be a right triangle. That's even actually written right here for you guys, right there in our definition. Now, when it comes to triangles, right, actually very few triangles, right, if you consider all of the possible triangles, all the triangles that are possible, only a small number of them are actually going to be right triangles. In fact, the vast majority of the triangles that you could draw or make are going to be triangles that do not have a right angle. And we still need to be able to solve these triangles. And so that's where the law of sines comes in. We can use the law of sines to find missing side links or angle measures when the triangle is not a right triangle. So the whole point to this set of notes in these videos is going to be this guy right here, the law of sines and how we use it to solve triangles um, that don't have a right angle in them. Now, the actual law of sines is really pretty straightforward. It's not too terribly difficult. Uh, what you're going to do is, again, we're setting up a ratio where all we're doing is taking the ratio of the angle, the sine of the angle, divided by the length of the opposite side, right? Which you can clearly see here from the diagram. I've got this triangle here. There's uh, angle A, angle B, angle C, and then across from that angle would be the length, right? So this is angle A, across from it, side A. Angle B, across from it, would be side B, and angle C, across from it, would be side C. Now, the way, of, the, way the law of sines works is you just set up a ratio for each of those angle measures and its opposite side. So the sine of angle A divided by A has to be equal to the sine of angle B divided by B has to be equal to the sine of angle C divided by the length of side C. Now, that means that I am going to have to give you some information, and that's what we talk about right here. What kind of information do you have to have? Well, here we go. Think back with me for a second, back to when we did triangle congruence theorems. Now, of course, the triangle congruence theorems, we did CPCTC, but because CPCTC took so long to do, we had several shortcuts, right? Um, uh, some special triangle similarity theorems uh, that um, 
required us to find the minimum amount of congruency to still sh know for sure, to still prove the triangles were congruent. Here they were. We had the side, I'm sorry, side. We had the angle, side, angle, triangle congruence theorem, which means if you could show that two of the sides in the, oh, good grief, that two of the angles in the included side were congruent, you could say the triangles were congruent. We had the side, angle, side. So showing two of the sides are congruent and the included angle is congruent, then the triangles are congruent. We had the angle, angle side and the side, 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 right? So those were our four shortcuts for triangle congruence theorems. Again, remember, this was proving that triangles were congruent. Now, we are not, we are not going to be proving triangles are congruent here. We're simply trying to use the law of sines to solve for unknown angle measures. But this goes a long way here in helping us understand what's happening here. Please notice that what I've done here is I've simply told you, right, the law of signs, right, the law of signs will work as long as you know, as long as you're given this information. So first, you must be given either angle, angle, side, right? You have to know two of the angles and a side, just like we've got up here, angle, angle, side. You need to know an angle, side, angle. Well, angle, side, angle, right? So those two, check, check, right? We've got those two. Those are our congruence theorems from uh, way back, uh, back when we were doing triangle congruence. And here they show up again. If you're given that information, angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle, we can use the law of sines to help us solve the triangle. Again, we're not proving congruence. We're not proving congruence. It's just this is the information that you would have to be given. Angle, side, angle, or angle, angle, side. Then I give you this second condition, right? Why is this one different? Let me highlight it in blue. Look at what it says. If you are given a side, a side, and a non-included angle. That's not in my list. Here's what's going on with this one. If you're given information about two of the sides and a non-included angle, we can, we can use the law of sines to solve the triangle. Again, we're not proving congruency, so it doesn't matter that this isn't one of my theorems, but what's important about this is why. Why when we were doing the triangle congruence theorems, why didn't side side angle work as one of our theorems? And what I'm going to remind you of is the fact that this was actually what we call the ambiguous what we call the ambiguous case, meaning with this information, a side, a side, and an angle, we actually did not have enough information to prove that the triangles were congruent. Now, we're not proving triangles are congruent here. This is enough information to prove the law of sines. However, it is still going to be the ambiguous case, meaning the problems are gonna be a little bit more difficult. We're actually gonna wind up having to solve for two different triangles, and I'll show you why that is when we actually get to these problems. All I wanna do right now is just simply remind you that the side-side angle was not one of our triangle congruence theorems because it was the ambiguous case. It wasn't enough information to prove the triangles were congruent. And so now that we're gonna wind up using this information to do the law of sines, that ambiguous case is now going to come back and it's actually going to make these problems just a little bit trickier to solve than these ones, right? These ones are real straightforward, no problem. Use the law of sines and you're good. This one's gonna be a little bit more difficult and the reason it's the ambiguous case, um, which goes back to when we did the triangle congruence theorems. So head on over to the next page of the notes. I'll show you how the law of signs works when actually solving some problems and I'll meet you there.